Hello and welcome back again. Um, last time at the end of the video uh, we calculated the future value of an uneven cash flow stream. Um, I mentioned in passing the idea of net present value. Um, I said I would do that this time. Um, we could do it now. Um, the net present value is, is actually the present value um, of the uneven cash flow stream that we discussed um, in the last video, uh, the second to last example. Um, the idea of the net present value is that it's just the net of all the present values. So when we have our our timeline, um, let's just draw it out here. And when we had that timeline, you know, like this, we had x, y, z. All we had to do was discount x by one plus i to the one, and that. That present value that of the uneven cash flow is actually what we call the net present value because it's the net of all the present values. Um, so this is the present value of x. We, you know, just we pull it back by one year. That's the present value of x. And we have y. You know, one plus i squared, or rather to the two because. Um, <coughs> and then we pull back z as well, um, but we pull back z a little bit further than x and y, and we pull it back by 3. Um, so the idea here is that we are just pulling back the present values, and then we're netting them together, so that, that really gives you the net present value of this entire project. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Now, there's one more question that you might get um, on this, and that is, as opposed to getting an interest rate, um, you actually have to solve for the interest rate with uneven cash flows. That's pretty difficult. Um, when it was even cash flows, you know, it's very simple because you have your, you know, oops, sorry, have your PV. Oh, sorry. Um, <coughs> you have your PV. Um, Let's, let's just put that in. PV, FV, PMT, I, and N. And, you know, if you had a present value and a future value um, and a payment and a number of years, you could, you know, simply solve for the interest rate right here. But that was only when, the, when there was a PMT, and the PMTs were for annuities when there's a fixed interval and a fixed payment for every period. However, to solve for an interest rate in an uneven cash flow is pretty uh, difficult um, unless you use this special function called the IRR function. And the IRR function will probably explain in depth um, in later videos when it comes to capital budgeting techniques, but at this time uh, we can actually use um, the IRR method to calculate the interest rate <coughs> in a set of uneven cash flows as follows. Um, Let's do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it's going to be 3, 4, and 5. Now, let's say that in time period 0, there is a cash outflow of minus 1,000. And that is really... Oh gosh, that was awful. Let me there we go, that's a bit better. Uh, there's a cash outflow of minus a thousand, and that really is representative of any type of you know project you're going to undertake. Let's say you're buying this machine for a thousand dollars, and it's going to give you back uneven cash flows. So let's say at the first year it will give you a cash flow of a hundred dollars, and two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, um, three hundred dollars, and let's say in the fifth year it gives you five hundred dollars. <coughs> so obviously an uneven cash flow again because they're not. They're not even at all, but we're asking ourselves really what is the interest rate over here? I equals what? So the way that we do this um, is we have to use the cash flow function um, where essentially all you need to do is plug in all of these cash flows into a cash flow sheet um, or a cash flow worksheet. Um, which is pretty easy if you read the instruction manual for your calculator. You just I think it's the CFJ button. Um, CF zero here is minus a thousand. <coughs> so you would do it as follows. You would type in. Um, I mean, this is really you know how 
we'd like to think about it. Cash flow, right, as we said in the last video, CF stands for cash flow zero. That's the cash flow in time period zero. That would be negative a thousand. And then you'd have CF one, CF two, CF three. Um, let's just come down here a little bit. Um, CF four and CF five. And I think each time you <coughs> Each time you uh, put in a cash flow, I think you have to hit CFJ in between. Um, that's how it works on the on the HP calculator. Uh, on the BA2 Plus the Texas Instruments one, you just hit the CF button, you see CF0, and you just press the up and down arrows to cycle through the worksheet. It's actually really cool. Uh, it's much easier than the HP one, but that's just my opinion. Um, CF3 is 300, CF4 is 300. CF5 is 500, and now all we want to do is IRR, and on the BA2 Plus you hit the IRR button and then you just hit Compute, the CPT <coughs> um, button, and I think for the BA2 Plus I think you actually hit I as in regular interest rate and then you hit uh, Compute um, or Solve or Calculate, and it gives you the IRR which is the interest rate which basically discounts all of these future values back to the present and sets them equal to a thousand. So it's essentially, I mean if you want to think about it, it's kind of like the interest rate which will discount all of these values so that it breaks even with a thousand. <coughs> That's kind of how to, oh sorry I've made a mistake over here, so you have zeros, a thousand. <coughs> That's kind of how to think about this, um, you know, what's the interest rate that will kind of break even all of these future cash flows when they come back to the present and setting them equal to a thousand. That's essentially what the IRR function does, but we'll discuss it uh, in more depth later on um, when we get to capital budgeting. So that is basically solving for I with uneven cash flows. We did for solving for the for the net present value, that's, you know, you would use the net present value function. So over here, if you if you had an interest rate, for example, if the interest rate was given to you, ooh, whoops. So yeah, in this in this case, let's just say that you had an interest rate that was given to you. Um, so let's say over here that it was, you know, let's say 10, right? So 10 percent, right? Again, in a very similar fashion, you'd put in all the cash flows, um, CF zero, which is you know the one that paid out today is negative a thousand, and all the others are positive. And then obviously over here we have this i this time, which is 10. And then all you would do is you would simply solve for the net present value, NPV equals blah. And NPV is actually a function in the uh, calculator, so all you've got to do is just hit it and press compute, and it will just essentially automate the pulling back, or what we like to say in fancy terms, the discounting of all of these values back to this time period zero, um, and once it's done that, it just adds them all together. Um, that's all it does, it just brings them all back to this time period right here. Um, and that's how to solve the net present value. And of course from before the future value, there is no future value or net future value uh, function, but all you need to do is you would just need to take these forward as we did in the previous video, um, and then add them all together at the end. Um, so that's that's basically um, <coughs> solving for i with uneven cash flows and solving for the net present value when there are uneven cash flows but you are given an i. Um, and that basically brings us to the end of this part. Um, next time we're going to discuss different compounding periods.